Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to SCZ Live. I'm Kara, and I'm here with my friend Katie, and we are on the, on the safe side of the moat from the African Painted Dogs. And today we've got some excitement for you as they're going to run around and forage for some food, and Katie's going to give you some information about what's going on. So these are our African Painted Dogs. Uh, they are a member of the Canid family. Um, they are very unique from a lot of the other canids. Uh, they have only four toes on their front feet, which is pretty unique, and they come from their own genus. Uh, they have a few different uh, common names. They're sometimes called African painted wolves. Uh, in the past, they've been called uh, hunting dogs, wild dogs, and conservationists are actually working really hard to kind of remarket the painted dog by giving them a little less aggressive name like hunting or wild mm -hmm. and giving them a little bit different name and painted makes a lot of sense because their scientific name actually translates to painted wolf-like animal. So it makes a really that, big sense to call them painted dogs. That does make sense and I do remember um, early on in my career they were African hunting dogs and, and we have transitioned to that painted dog. Um, name and I it fits well it fits very well and one of the reasons why that's so important in Africa specifically is because these uh, the species has been uh, targeted a lot by farmers and held responsible for uh, the taking of a lot of livestock and data from researchers actually shows that they are not responsible for the taking of that of those farm animals and so there's been a lot of uh, efforts uh, going in to kind of remarket them with the local people in Africa and to teach them that painted dogs are actually something that is beneficial in their environment and is not causing their livestock to be killed or causing issues with their income. How old are these two? These two individuals are both uh, 11 years old. They uh, are a seasonal breeder so just about every painted dog that's born in North America is born sometime between the end of September and the beginning of December and these, bo these were both born uh, the same uh, season in uh, 2009. Uh, the male is the one here in the front that's got a lot more white on him. He is a little bit more of a linebacker uh, body type, uh, a little bit blockier head and the female is in the back. Uh, she's a, got a little less white on her body and um, is a little bit more of what I would consider a running back or a wide receiver body type. And that's typical for males and females to have that difference in body, body shape. Um, another interesting thing about the painted dogs is that every dog has its own unique coat pattern. Uh, and so it's very much like a fingerprint that we can track individuals both in zoos and identify individuals as well as identifying uh, individuals and packs in the wild. We have a good question and you're a great person to answer this. Um, one of our friends would like to know if we've noticed that the animals act any different without visitors? Uh, they, they do. It depends on the animal. Some of our animals uh, are very celebratory of quiet. Uh, some of our animals are, were initially enjoying a little bit more quiet at the zoo and have now become a little bit more accustomed to that and are maybe seeking out a little more attention from mm -hmm. people that are from staff that are around. Uh, and others really don't have a preference either way. Right. I have noticed there have been some animals that seem more interested in my presence now. Absolutely. because we're sort of a novelty as we're going about our daily work. Yes, definitely that is true and we also see it amongst the keeper staff. Uh, we see a little bit of a change in everybody's behavior. Uh, we also have construction across the way from this space uh -huh. and so we've had a little bit of a change in behavior with uh, these two individuals uh, because of the extra noise from the construction and one of the things that we've done to kind of help them with that is they actually have access to go into their den uh -huh. at all times so that if they want to get away from some of that extra noise and activity they can do that it's very important for us Absolutely. to offer them that choice and control exactly. over their situation 
We have another friend who'd like to know how big they are. How many pounds do you think they reach? Um, it has been a while since we've weighed them. Um, the male is obviously a little heavier than the female. I want to say that they're somewhere around 40 to 50 pounds. Maybe the female's a little less than that. But that is a question that I don't know off the top of my head. I'm, I'm trying to put it in, in terms that maybe the, our visitors would understand. Just what size of a dog that they would normally encounter do you think they would be? So I would say they would be, the female specifically would be uh, maybe a little bit smaller than an average German Shepherd. Uh -huh. And the male a little bit heftier than that. Um, they also have really long legs and that's really important to their hunting styles. They pretty much run down their prey into exhaustion and they need really long legs in order to have that good stamina. So they're a little bit taller than a lot of the domestic species that, or a lot of the domestic uh -huh. breeds that they would be similar to. Um, and so that can be a little... Uh, it, it makes it hard for yeah, an apple to apples comparison. Absolutely. It really does. Yeah. Um, what kind of noises do they make? Um, they growl. They, uh, they also make a kind of a chirping noise. That's something that they do when they have uh, food available to them and they get really excited. They make a big chirping sound. It actually sounds like a big flock of chirping birds sometimes uh -huh. and it doesn't really sound like a dog at all. That is, I'm glad you mentioned that because one time I was here after hours and I walked by and I, I heard that noise and I, I didn't have any concept of what it could be and I, it may have been you who later told me that it was the case of dogs. Yeah. yeah, a squeaky dog toy is a really good uh, kind of comparison too. Thank you, Kayla. And their spots are, I mean, obviously very visually pleasing because it makes them look fabulous, but there's a purpose, right? Yeah, the, the coat pattern and kind of the modeling color to them uh, helps them with a little bit of camouflage. It helps uh, they're not really stalking or ambush predators like a lot of other large carnivores are in Africa, um, but it does help them kind of sneak up on, on prey. Uh, it also, when you get a big group of them together, it can cause a little bit of confusion as how many are there uh -huh. um, and, and what the actual danger is. How, how fast do you think they can run? And I think really it's more important to state they're long distance runners, right? Yes, they are definitely long distance runners. They are marathon runners, not sprinters. So the speed at which they run is a lot less important than how long they can run. Because uh -huh. again, they will, uh, they'll just run down their prey items until they can't run anymore, until the prey item can't run anymore. Uh -huh. they, they are large pack animals and they will share the, the burden of being the lead animals in that pack when they're chasing something down. And they will, you know, once the front ones get tired, then the, um, the back ones will kind of come up to the front and take over that role while the ones that were in the front can kind of back off and uh, take a little bit of a break. So we have a friend who wondered why they were so active. She asked if it was the construction noise. Isn't it partially that, but also because Joe is giving them opportunities for enrichment yes, and throwing um, part yummy of, tidbits? Part of the activity is that we are tossing them some bits of uh, beef loin and uh, beef heart for treats. It's kind of getting them foraging a little bit and a little active. Um, and part of it is just the female is very often doing a lot of perimeter uh, running, and that is territorial behavior. So she does a lot of kind of making sure that the territory is in, is is hers and identified as hers, mm -hmm. and and that's one of the things that she does as the dominant female. Do they, how do they mark their ter territory? Uh, they will mark their territory with urine, uh -huh. and they will mark their territory with feces. Uh -huh. um, they don't really do a whole lot of territorial marking vocally, uh -huh. but they will call pack members together with uh, what's called a who call, uh -huh. um, and that will kind of gather everybody together for a hunt. So we have the two individuals. We've got the female, Micah, and the male is Ngozi. Uh, these two are what we call a retired breeding pair. 
they have produced offspring in the past and they have uh, produced enough offspring that are now breeding as well that um, and they have brothers and sisters that are out there breeding and so we've been able to retire them as a as a breeding couple. Um, we spayed the female and one of the reasons why we did that is just like it's important to spay your domestic dog uh -huh. um, is that spaying her then allowed us to not have to worry about uh, some health issues that can happen with female dogs that aren't actively breeding and producing offspring. Um, and earlier we kind of talked about how these two look a little different. The males um, are more stocky and the females, and I think you said a running, or a linebacker, and the females are more like the running back. So is that, that's true across the species? The males are generally stockier? Yes, males are a little bit heftier. They've got kind of more blocky shaped heads. They've got a lot more hair around their necks. Um, and kind of look a little more um, bulky uh -huh. than the females. The females are a little more sleek. Oh, why are they sniffing the ground so much? They're looking for food, so they're foraging for the treats that uh, that Joe has tossed out. So they're just making sure that they got everything. Oh, kind of like my my dog at home who makes sure you have to clean up after the, the yes. cooking of the meal. Yes. And I've noticed, and some of our friends, our viewers have noticed, that they are not going for a swim. Do they no. not like water? Uh, there are some painted dogs that do like going into the water and like to swim. Uh, these individuals don't. And the way that we have this space designed is that the water in front is uh, an actual containment barrier for them. Uh -huh. It allows our guests, the dogs, uh, unobstructed in kind of an open-aired environment without any obstruction and they won't go into the moat and even if they did if they wanted to go into that moat they aren't able to come out on the guest side okay. there's no way for them to get out of the water on this side uh -huh. and so that's how it works as a containment barrier we did build them a new pool a couple summers ago and it is more of a wading pool that's one of the ways that they uh, cool off uh -huh. in the summer when it's hot is they'll go into the wading pool and they'll just kind of lay down their bellies and kind of get their bellies wet and then they'll get back up and continue on with what they were doing and so it's a nice way for them to kind of cool off kind of like a little baby pool all right well we really appreciate you having us out today and and giving us some information about the painted dogs it's been a great experience and we'd like to let everybody know that even though we're closed we're still caring We'd also like to give a shout out today to Earhart Environmental Magnet who's been using the zoo's Facebook Live and website information as part of their classroom curriculum this week. You can go to www.scz.org under coronavirus at the top and find all sorts of different activities for kids to do at home. Um, as well as don't forget that we go Facebook Live at 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock daily. We also have our 4 o'clock animal ambassador post and you can also join us live on Twitter. Don't forget that Earth Day is next week. We'll be celebrating Earth Day on April 22nd. We have a very special Facebook post idea to, uh, this week where we're asking you to share with us what Earth Day means to you. One of our education staff will then put together a video and we'll post that on Facebook as well.